Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to celebrate again a special anniversary in the CPU world. The 25th anniversary of the Pentium 3. Back in 1999, on February 26, the Pentium 3 Catmay Core was officially launched by Intel. Let's explore this milestone in CPU history a bit more in detail together. In this video I will introduce the major processors of the Pentium 3 family, talk about its main features and I will also dive deeper into the microarchitecture using some microscopy pictures made by Fritzjens Fritz. Let's place the Pentium 3 in the right context. For this I plotted the transistor count of the Intel CPUs over time. It is still amazing to see that CPUs increased over the decades from a couple of thousand transistors in the early 1970s to a couple of billions by 2020. The launch of the Pentium 3 Catmay happened during a very dynamic time when large advancements came along almost every quarter. Between 1995 and 2002 many iconic platforms were introduced, such as the Pentium, the Pentium Pro, the Pentium 2, the Pentium MMX, the Pentium 3, the Pentium 3 Xeon, and the Pentium 4. There are three main members, so called CPU cores, of the Pentium 3 family the Catmay core, followed by the Coppermine core, and the Tualatin core. So what were the main improvements from core to core? The Catmay was launched as Single Edge Contact Cartridge SEC2. All Pentium 3 cores have 32 KB first level cache, 16 for instructions and 16 for data, but they differ in second level cache size and speed. The Catmay second level cache was not on chip and ran only at half the CPU speed. Produced at 250 nm, the Catmay had 9.5 million transistors and was available at up to 600 MHz frequency. The Coppermine core was a die shrink using a 180 nm node introduced only 8 months later. The smaller node allowed to integrate 256 KB second level cache at full clock speed, which also increased the transistor count to over 28 million. This Pentium 3 core was finally hitting the 1 GHz barrier. The Tualatin core was introduced in 2000 with a manufacturing technology of 130 nm. Finally, the full 512 KB second level cache was integrated on die with 44 million transistors enabling CPU speeds of 1.4 GHz. The Catme core had a front side bus of 100 MHz, which could be increased with the Coppermine core but only with PGA370 systems. Coppermine SEC versions also existed, as can be seen in the middle. Coppermine and Tualatin cores were also available as low-end processors called Celeron, which usually had only half the second level cache. Next to Mobile 3 versions, the high-performance platform Xeon was further developed. Those processors could have up to 2 MB second level cache. As mentioned, the Pentium 3 Coppermine was the first Intel CPU to hit 1 GHz in early 2000. While AMD announced its 1 GHz processor first, Intel reported that it had actually shipped a production level 1 GHz chip even before AMD. The competition was intense and both companies were trying hard to be the leader in this speed race. I do not know in the end who was the winner, do you? Anyway, this is the CPU that reached the magical limit of 1 GHz CPU speed in those days. So how does a Pentium 3 silicon die look like? For this I will use the fantastic work of Fritz Jens Fritz, who is a passionate silicon dye photographer. The pictures are meanwhile also available on Wikipedia. The 250 nm Catme core is 128 square mm in size. The 180 nm process node, as applied on the Coppermine core, reduced the die size, and the second level cache is now visibly integrated in the left area of the chip. Tualatin, produced at 130 nanometers, 
allows to shrink the die further to 80 square millimeters, although the second level cache doubled in size. An interesting comparison is also the following. On the left, the standard copper mine is visible produced at 180 nanometers. The same note as the Pentium 3 Xeon on the right. This Xeon version, however, features 2 MB second level cache, so 8 times that of the standard copper mine version. What a gigantic chip this is! Just for fun, I took a macro shot of the hologram sticker that is put on every SEC package. Comparing this with the real die shot reveals many similarities, like the sections marked here in red. But there are also differences. Just have a look at the yellow section for example. In the final CutMay implementation, this unit seems to have been turned 90 degrees counterclockwise. From this evidence, I get the impression that the hologram was made before the silicon design was finalized. Doing some further research, I found out that actually the hologram is not featuring the Pentium CatMay core at all, but the two years earlier launched Pentium 2 core Klamath. It is quite a bummer to see Intel using the hologram for several years on SEC packages regardless of the CPU core. But okay, it is just a gimmick. Now let's have a closer look at the microarchitecture of the Pentium 3. For this I will use again the copper mine die shot of Fritzins Fritz. The following microarchitecture units can be identified. Second level cache with full CPU speed. Instruction fetch unit, including 16 KB instruction first level cache, sending the data to the instruction decoder. Micro instruction sequencer, including the microcode ROM. Reorder buffer holding right back, results. Reservation station for micro instructions and source data. Single instruction multiple data integer, execution unit for MMX instructions. Memory interface unit. Register alias table. Branch address calculator for static branch prediction. Allocator of RS, MOB and ROB entries. Branch target buffer, dynamic branch prediction and the testability access port. Data cache unit, 16 KB. Memory order buffer. Integer execution unit. Floating point unit also for the new SSE instructions. Pack floating point arithmetic unit. The page mishandler. Data translation look aside buffer and the clock. Backside bus logic. External bus logic. And the programmable interrupt controller. A custom copper mine based Pentium 3 version was developed for Microsoft's Xbox game console. The only significant change was that the chip lost half of its second level cache, dropping it down to 128KB. The Xbox CPU was manufactured on the same micro PGA2 packaging as notebook chips, but in a VGA ball grid array format. In a future video, I will tear down this Xbox to retrieve the Pentium 3 for my collection. Talking about future videos, I saved this IBM desktop computer from the scrapyard. It has the Pentium sticker on the front side, so I was curious how such a computer performs. I already had a peek into the computer and it is actually running on a 500MHz Katmai Pentium 3. Ok, with this outlook, I would like to conclude. Although the Pentium 3 is only one of the many stepping stones in the CPU history, looking closer at it shed some lights on the elements I was not aware of before. The P3 was one of the first CPUs to hit the 1 GHz landmark. Further, Intel could finally achieve a decent integration of the second level cache, which did not only help to eliminate the SECC package, the second level cache was finally addressed at full CPU speed. In addition, 
the FSB was raised from 100 to 133 MHz. And finally, the SSE instructions were introduced, among many more incremental architecture features that are still present in today's CPUs. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hang on for further CPU related videos on my channel.